Hi, I'm Steve Maletto from the Teaching, Learning, Leading K-12 podcast, a part of the Education Podcast Network, just like the show you're listening to now. Shows on the network are individually owned and opinions expressed may not reflect others. Find other interesting education podcasts at edupodcastnetwork.com. Welcome, everybody, to this episode of the Ninth Grade Experience Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Dutchko. Ninth grade can be challenging. Let's experience it together. And I hope you are enjoying your summer here in sweaty uh, Emmaus, Pennsylvania. It has been, you know, either raining or super hot. So hopefully you are doing something to beat the heat, uh, whether it's indoors or outdoors. So hopefully everyone is enjoying their summer. Uh, Like I said, we're going to continue doing new content. We've been posting stuff on TikTok and YouTube shorts all throughout the summer. So hopefully you've been enjoying some of those things. And today we're going to do a full episode. Uh, I recorded this on the last day of school with two students, one freshman, one sophomore, who are in a band. So I recorded with Ez Alexander and June Conrad, who are members of the band Vision Blur. And they're a small local band here from, you know, in the school district area. And the reason that I asked them to come on is they actually had a viral TikTok video uh, at the end of the school year. So, you know, as somebody that runs a TikTok account, like anytime I get like a good amount of viewers, I get excited. Um, but these guys posted a video. Um, I was actually there when they made the video, just happenstance to be there. It was at the International Fair in February. And I walk into the uh, auditorium and the band is playing a cover of Nirvana's Smells Like Teen Spirit. So if you've never heard the song, please go listen to it. Listen to their version and the other version, the the original Nirvana version. Um, But I heard it and I took a small five-second video of it and I sent it to the teacher that I work with saying, oh my God, this band's on stage and they're pretty good. So they actually recorded their own episode, their, their concert. They put the song on TikTok and it just blew up. And as of today in July of 2023, the video has 1.8 million views on TikTok, where maybe that's not a super, ton, like that's a super amount, um, but it is way more than anyone that I've ever known that's posted on TikTok. So I was really interested to hear what it was like for them to be able to deal with getting that many likes and watches on a video in such a short period of time and what it's done for them and their music at this point. So they were really open and honest and they shared a lot as we were kind of closing out the school year. They talked about what it was like on the days after they posted the video and dealing with all the notifications and how they turned stuff off on their phone and what they're trying to do as a band moving forward. So I think this is a really cool story of ninth graders in our school that were, you know, got TikTok popular and what it actually meant. And like they kept coming to school. They didn't make a ton of money off off of it um, as during the episode actually talks about how much money they made. And it was like a ridiculous amount of how low it was um, based on the number of views. So I won't spoil that. But I think it's really an interesting case of we, you know, as you know, we see all these kids that want to be TikTok famous and famous on social media. And what does that mean? And we actually had some kids in our school go a little viral. And what did it mean for them? So hopefully you enjoyed this episode. Uh, if you like this episode and all the other episodes, you can go back to ninthgradeexperience.com. Check out all of our previous episodes. And like I said, we're going to keep putting new stuff up over the over the summer as well too. So keep an eye on the TikTok. Keep an eye on the YouTube Shorts. Um, keep an eye on all that stuff as well because we're you know we're out there. We're trying to figure out what we're going to talk about for the upcoming year. We got some people that we we're going to try to talk to, and. Believe it or not, school is right around the corner. So um, hopefully everyone's enjoying their summer. And I hope you enjoy this conversation with June and Ez uh, of the Van Vision Blur and their TikTok rise to fame during the uh, end of the 23 school year. So thanks a lot. So we're here today with Ez and June, who are two members of the band Vision Blur. And I wanted to catch up with these these guys before the end of the school year because they had something pretty cool happen to them during the course of this school year. So they had a video go, I guess you could call it viral on TikTok. Yep. They had 1.8 million views of a video that they recorded here at the high school during the International Fair in February uh, of their band. And it was the first ever live performance of their band, correct? Correct, yeah. And you guys went viral on it. So why don't you kind of t- take us through a little bit of that and kind of, you know, starting a band, putting some stuff up online, and what happened? Um, okay, so... The, the real start of the band is his story to tell. So. Yeah. So 
I originally played guitar just by myself, and I somehow convinced my brother to start playing drums. Um, Is none your dad? of, yeah, yeah. My dad has like a studio and stuff, and that's how we learned. But basically, no one was a musician before, like the band. We all just kind of. I didn't know about this. <laughs> yeah, we all just kind of started hanging out and grabbing instruments. Um, and then yeah, we picked a couple songs to start playing. That's um, basically it. And then we met at the beginning of the school year, me and him. Um, and I found out that he was in a band, and it was just you, the drummer and the bassist at this point, right? So just him, Josh, and Xavier at this time, which is Josh is the drummer and Xavier is the bassist. Um, and I kind of found out that they had a band. Oh, and Jacob was in it at this point too, right? So Jacob was the pianist and is now the second guitarist. Um, okay. So I found out that he had a band and it's been like my lifelong dream to be in a band because I sing a lot. Um, and I just think it's like a really cool experience to have. And I was like, I want to be your singer. And I kind of forced them into it a little bit. Um, and then at practice, I, they kind of held a like makeshift audition for me, if you will. And I just kind of sang along to one of their songs and it went really well. Yeah. So they were like, you're in the band, I guess. So it's interesting, like, you know, as you know, somebody who's a little older, I grow up, you hear people about starting a band and it's like, it was the cool thing to do. I don't really know how much that happens today of kids like starting a band. So it's kind of neat to hear Not like super you often. So you literally have like the, the, the origin story of like garage band, find <laughs> the lead singer, you know, and then kind of practice. So, you know, you, you said you kind of knew them at the beginning of the year. So you kind of worked up to this. So talk about, like, how did you actually get the gig to be at the International Fair? Um, that, do you want to tell this part? Yeah, sure. So for a while, we were like, we didn't really think we were ready to play out and live because we were just like starting out. But my, um, my French teacher was talking about it. She offered us the... Um, like gig at the international fair because we've talked about like the band in the past with her and so yeah we didn't really like push to be in she just kind of offered it but like it was a good decision i'm happy yeah. we did it and it kind of all played out pretty well because um it was kind of just it wasn't really confirmed until like the week before yeah. um and then everything just kind of fell into place and it was really cool because it wasn't like a paid type thing which was fine it was more yeah. like paid by recognition yeah. and like attention sort of and so that was kind of our like jumping off point so i remember i, I went to the international fair i walked mm -hmm. in and i saw there was a band and i'm like they're playing smells like teen spirit which i'm like okay it's the international fair i'm trying to figure out how this all fits in and you know later american on, later on <laughs> later on at the international fair you had bagpipers and other people came up and played music. So I walked in and I remember because you were on the stage and I took a quick like five second video and I sent the video to Miss Luansing. I think I mm -hmm. told you this, but if you I did, didn't, yeah. if I didn't, now I'm telling you again. So I sent the video to her and I'm like, oh my gosh, Ez is on stage singing Smells Like Teen Spirit. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. So I take the video, I, you know, mind my own business. And then I see later on TikTok that you put the video up. Yes. And it grew and it grew did, it did. and grew. So like over the course of like, I don't even know how fast it was. You guys probably know. It was a couple it, days. It, I think it's it, like two days. It made it to a million views. Now yeah. in the grand scheme of videos on TikTok, a million's not like earth shattering, but as somebody that's been doing TikTok all year with the ninth grade experience, my total number of views for the year was 400,000. <laughs> so you had a video that within the first couple of days of your first live performance as a band got a million views on TikTok. So what was that like? Like, Hey, what is it like when you like on your phones or whatever, however you're seeing it, like, what does that even do to your phone when you get a million views on it? So me and him are the ones who run the account. Um, cause we're just, I guess that's just kind of how it played out. Um, so I remember, posting it and it getting to like 2000 views and I was like holy crap this is crazy and I thought it was going to stop at like <laughs> 20,000 like at most and then I remember being at dinner with my family um and I like checked the account and it had like a lot more views it didn't have a million at this point but I had a lot more and I was like mom this is crazy like look at how many views this is getting. yeah um and so we both have our own accounts and so you can log out and I remember like 
at the top where you can switch your account. I remember seeing like nine plus notifications and I was like, I wonder what's happening. <laughs> and I remember looking and it was like totally blowing up. Yeah. Um, so I kind of like we discussed posting the video for a while and then we were like, yeah, sure, do it. And then I kind of forgot about it for like the first couple hours and then I checked back and it was like, I don't remember how it high it was, like but like, hours. yeah, like it was like, I don't know. It was crazy because that was also our first video that we posted. Yeah, right? I remember because I looked, cause I, you know, I looked on it and I saw. So like you're seeing the comments, you're seeing this kind of happen. So like what's going through your mind as you're kind of seeing this like literally go viral, like right in front of your faces? Yeah, I mean, it was like it was really weird because like I didn't. I don't know. It. Yeah, it wasn't really anything special. It right. was just kind of a clip of us playing. <laughs> it wasn't even like it was like a five second clip of yeah, literally but- just the intro. Like it wasn't even me singing the video, which we did that because most of the times longer videos don't get attention on TikTok because um, I think it's just how the algorithm works and no one's going to want to sit through a three minute video. Yeah. Um, so we wanted to just post that little snippet that would get people's attention. And I remember a lot of people were um asking for a full version um so that was kind of crazy and it just felt like i've never had like that sort of attention online before like the yeah. most because i have a private account um on tiktok and the most views i've ever gotten was like 400 <laughs> um so it was just kind of like for me it was like a really crazy experience because i had never had anything happen to me before like that and i feel like it's the type of thing you see people talk about um like you see other people talk about but i've never been the person able to talk about it yeah so okay so you get to the million and then what like you know this is the part of the band story where it's like you know then we got famous and then people start fighting and all the other stuff but obviously that <laughs> didn't happen, not, yeah that didn't really happen, happen here because you're still here so you posted videos after that so like i th- said at the beginning you kind of made it up to like 1.8 like i looked this morning so it's yeah. like 1.8 million views so what does that actually like other than the fact that now it's you know viral and out there and as many people have seen it, what does it do anything? Like, does it get you? Did it get you anything? Did it get you like notoriety? Did anyone reach out? Did oh, you get paid well, for that? Like, I so know. I think you have to get a lot of attention on TikTok to be able to make money from it, and consistently, like you need to be posting yeah. videos every day that are getting like yeah. more than a million views, and obviously. Um, we're not really capable of doing that as we're still in school and the chances of every video blowing up are low, I think. Yeah. Um, and so I think on that video we made like six cents, I yes. think was what it was. <laughs> like it was like six cents. Right. So it wasn't oh really a profit. Gosh. Um, but I, th- I feel like it definitely got us the attention that we wanted. And I remember, so I saw people, we have our location on our TikTok. Like we have that where we live in PA. Yeah. Um, and one of the shocking things that happened to me, I feel like it's not that crazy, but so a person reached out to me and they were like, hey, you're from PA. Do you know the coffee shop Nowhere Cafe um, or Nowhere Coffee? I forget what it's called, but there's one in Emmaus and there's yeah. one um, in, right near the Giant and the Panera. Um, I, I don't know what I think. It, it's like right out of Emmaus. Okay. Yeah. Um, and. I was like, oh my gosh, I go there all the time with my dad. Yes, I do know it. And they were like, my parents own the coffee shop. And if you guys ever want to like play an open mic here or something, I can get you hooked up. And so I was like, okay, we are getting like connections because of this. And then from the international fair, the principal of Iyer also offered us to play at like a dance or a pep rally or something. Oh, cool. Um, So it just kind of like, it started getting us these like connections and contacts, which was really cool. um, Because it was like, hey, people from our area are realizing like who we are and where we're from. And there were like other teenagers saying like, man, I wish I could come see you. You should come to like Kentucky. And I was like, (laughs) we can't do that. But it was like so cool that these people wanted to see us live. Like this is us that are like inspiring people. And I I just thought that was like really cool. Yeah. Talk about it. Um, Yeah. I just remember there being like a ton of comments asking about like, Oh my gosh, this is so good. You guys have Spotify. This right, is or great. Right, like a full version. Or yeah, full yeah. Game. Um, but yeah, just people being like, like I've always been the type of person that comment that on another person's right, post, right, and to right. be on the other side is just like, it was really weird. It was it a lot was of weird. attention. 
And it's interesting too, because like Smells Like Teen Spirit is not like an easy song to like play. Obviously, like Nirvana, most famous song, like yeah. the lyrics are kind of like a jumble. Like if you <laughs> listen to them, it's not like the most clear song, but like, you know, it's an iconic song that people know. And for you to do that with the song and for people to embrace it, I think is kind of an interesting like part of that as well, because it's not like, you know, I think at the same gig or maybe the, some of the other videos, um, mm -hmm. I think you posted like Say It Ain't So by Weezer. Right. And again, these are songs that I'm wondering like as a whole, like do kids your own age even know because it's not the normal stuff. But like to take songs like that, that are like, you know, me as a kid of the 90s, like right. those are like <laughs> iconic songs. And it's cool to see like students at the high school, like A, know them. B, I'm sure if you wore the band t-shirt, because I saw somebody today, it was funny. Oh man, what was the band? It was... Oh, I forget. But I wanted to stop them and be like, do you know any songs by this? A lot artist? of people wear like sublime shirts. And That's stuff. what it was. Yeah. It was sublime. <laughs> it was a sublime t-shirt. And I'm like, this person probably has no idea no. Like, any sublime songs. But like for you guys to like play Smells Like Teen Spirit, like that song and to take that, like must have been pretty cool to like know that you did a version that people kind of like liked and attached themselves to. The whole thing is finding your like, um, What's the word I'm looking for? Like intended audience, um, target audience. Yeah. The whole thing is finding people in the same like subculture as you, I guess. And so a lot of people at the school listen to like popular stuff now. Like, I don't know, like The Weeknd is, a, I know, a popular yeah. group that makes music and is like on the radio and stuff. But then there's people who are more alternative or listen to their parents' music. And those are the people that are going to be really excited to see that there are other people yeah. who are also listening to this. And so once you find that group, it's really easy to kind of target them and yeah. know what they like. Um, and another thing I kind of wanted to mention is that there were some like hate comments on the video. There were people who were like, um, you're playing too fast. Um, like this is such a basic song to play. Um, but the thing that was crazy to me is for every hate comment, there were 20 comments defending us. And it was like, I have never been the kind of person who is sitting here watching myself get defended you know what i mean like yeah, I, that's, that's never cool yeah, the right because like all these people they don't know us they don't know who we are they don't even know our last names but they're standing up for us just because they like what we posted on tiktok like that was really that was like a really cool thing that happened in my opinion on the page like yeah, that, was, that is yeah and i remember reading and scrolling through and you did you definitely got a chance to see like a lot of people reached out, a lot of comments. And then of course, I think it comes with the territory of comments online that you're going to get some negative. Of course, everyone and does. So dealing with that, it seems like you guys have a level head of dealing with the, the negativity or the, those kinds of things. So, you know, kind of keeping it all in perspective. So we're now about, what, three months after the video. So what has life been like for Vision Blur since the video? Um, practices have been a little difficult because yeah. everyone's busy. Um, but... We've been continuously posting. Stuff isn't blowing up as much. Like it's getting like thousand to two thousand views. Um, but honestly, it was really overwhelming at first. I remember I had to log out of the account because I was like kind of shaken up about this, and I was like, "Whoa, this is like really overwhelming." And so I had to log out of the account um, for a little while. So I don't even mind that it's kind of slowing down because um, I feel like it's just easier to deal with. Yeah. Um, but. I mean, life is good. We have a gig coming up. Uh, we're playing at my stepsister's graduation party. Um, we're getting paid, I think, two fifty, right? Hey, um, you're getting paid. You're yeah. not paid musicians. There you go. You're, yeah, you're you're professionals. Um, and then I think we might be opening for his dad's band um, at the Rising River. Is that what it's yeah. called in Makanji. Okay. Um, so that's exciting. Um, I think it's like a restaurant slash bar. Yeah, it's cool. Thing. It's like out like it's a, where a restaurant used to be there in, in the like Makanji area, and it's like. There's like a creek that runs through. It's kind of it's yeah, cool. it is cool. Um, so like, for people that like say they want to be like TikTok famous or Instagram famous, mm -hmm. like, what would you say to those people? Like, what has that situation done? Is it like opened your eyes to like, what does it really even mean? Like, you know, you didn't stop coming to school. You didn't get signed to a record label. You didn't like, you know, it doesn't really change your life as much as people think it will. It doesn't like. To get, I feel like a lot of people say they want to like be able to have TikTok as their like income. Yeah. That is like extremely difficult to do because you need to be making content that is blowing up every single time. And like to be able to do that is not easy because like I see creators 
who are doing this and are getting thousands, millions of views on every video. And they're also saying how negative it, it's affecting, how negatively it's affecting their mental health. And it's like, I wonder if these people realize what goes along with it, you know? Yeah. And also it's like, I think a lot of people who are maybe like more sensitive need to like be aware of that before going into like trying to blow up on social media. Cause there are going to be people who are saying like really mean stuff and you have to be prepared for that. You know? Yeah. June, how about you? Has it changed um, your life in any way? <laughs> um, I wouldn't say it's changed my life, but like, it's definitely cool to just like people to recognize you. And a lot of people were like, Oh, this guitarist is so cool. Right. He's the only cool person in the band. <laughs> no, just, kidding. Um, just kidding. But yeah, it was definitely cool. But there is, yeah, there's some negative stuff that comes with it. Like it was really overwhelming trying to like respond to a lot yeah, of comments. That was another thing. I realized, sorry, I kind of realized um, I would always get, whenever I would see, hold on, I'll give it back to you in a second. <laughs> um, whenever I would see like creators on TikTok, um, who kind of blew up and I would comment on their videos. I was like, dang, this creator never replied to me. Like that would be so awesome. Um, but like being able to respond to every single comment is like so incredibly difficult. Yeah. Like trying to scroll through every single comment on that video was like tiring. Like it took forever. Yeah. And we have what, like 20, 30,000 yeah, comments. Yeah. I was just going to look it like, up to yeah. see like the number of comments on there. Now I kind of yeah, had it up. A lot. It's, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot. I, yeah. I remember like the first like two hours I was trying to respond to everything and it was at like a hundred and I was doing fine. <laughs> and now it's like, yeah, uh, I was just like, I tried to keep up with it for like two days and yeah, then I just kind of stopped. Yeah. So like, I, I think you guys have shared a lot of cool, like good messages for students coming up, like that want to be TikTok famous and all these other things. And, you know, I think it's a cool, like behind the scenes behind, you know, making of the band, like, you know, hopefully, you know, as you guys progress through as a freshman and a sophomore, you know, maybe we'll have to have you back on as seniors and we'll see like, hey, like what happened with the band? Maybe it'll be like the second part of the behind the music where like, and then the band broke up and then we'll have to have that behind <laughs> the, the scenes, all the drama. Yeah. But like, it's so cool, like to see local somebody in the school with that kind of uh, make good. So congratulations to all of you. So like, coming up for the summer you have a couple gigs do you have like anywhere you know here's the chance to shout out all the places to go find stuff out about your bands um honestly it's mainly tiktok right now it's at vision blur band just spelled how you would normally spell it yep um that's kind of it we, we don't have an instagram or anything yet um but we're trying to we're gonna get a little more info out eventually yeah. and when we do book more shows and stuff it'll all be up on there yeah um we post everything we will be playing at the Rising River. I'm not sure the exact date, though. Um, but yeah, we don't have a lot of books right now. But that's awesome, though. And, you know, you'll have the summer, and then, yeah. you know, that's the whole story. So maybe maybe we'll sneak a song on at the end of this, the episode here or something that we have. But thanks a lot for joining us here on the last day of school. So now you can go off and be a TikTok famous <laughs> band for the rest of the summer. So thanks a lot. Thank you. <laughs>